when I think of his love for us, just his reckless love for us, hallelujah. I just thank God for even when we drift away from the Lord, he still leaves the 99 and looks for the one and he brings us back, hallelujah. Like the prodigal son, sometimes we drift away from the love of God, but he runs after you, he chases after you. What a love the Lord has for us that he chases after us until he finds us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And sometimes we think when, when he's chasing after us and when he finds us, we think that he will condemn us. The beautiful thing is that he never condemns us. When we come back, he celebrates. Hallelujah, that's what he did with the prodigal son. When he came back to home, he's celebrating with fatted cows and all the blood, putting a ring on his hand and all those blessings and just so overwhelming to know that we have a great shepherd. Hallelujah. I thank God for this opportunity to share the word of God. Um, and I'm going to read from um, John chapter 16 verse 33. John chapter 16 verse 33. And I'm going to read and it says, I have told you these things that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. 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 In this world you will have trouble, but take heart that I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every child of God, you know when we go to the hospital, you all see on the monitor, there's something that the EKG, how it goes. When you see there's a PQRS wave, so the waves goes like this. So that means there is life. But if you see a flat line, that means that person is dead. So if your life is full of ups and down, there may be a P wave, there may be a QRS wave or an ST wave that is going up and down, you know there is life. So in real life, our life is full of troubles and good times and bad times. Whether you're a child of God or it, it does not matter. Every person in this world, it says that you may have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The trouble that we face and someone else face in this world, all, it may be the same kind of trouble, but there is such a difference in how we face, how we, how we face those uh, all times and how we overcome. We overcome because of the blood of the Lamb. It is the blood of the Lamb that helps us to be victorious and overcomers in this world. Without His power, without His grace, where would it be? Hallelujah. Every time, every time we go through countless blessings, every situation that we go through, we fear sometimes, what is next? You know, it's like the one of the preachers, many, many years ago I heard it, a black preacher, he said, you know, your roads are like, you go, you go straight and again you find another turn. You think that turn is over and the giant keeps coming in that turn. And again you think you overcome that trouble and then you go around again. Another turn comes, another giant keeps coming. But the beautiful thing he said was, the giants keep coming but the blood keeps flowing. Hallelujah. I will never forget that when we go through troubles, yes, the giants keep coming, but the blood keeps flowing. Hallelujah. What a great joy that we have. The blood of Jesus, hallelujah, it keeps flowing for us. Hallelujah. Even when there are giants and things that we cannot face, that we, we worry about it, we think this is over. One day it's over, next thing comes. Hallelujah. But the beauty is that the blood keeps flowing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is a great shepherd. And the word of God says, so it says that you may have trouble, but take heart that I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. What happens on the inside is what's more important than what happens on the outside. People see the outside, the situations and the troubles, 
But what joy that we have inside is what's important. Hallelujah. In John 10.10, 10, the word of God says what? If you'll read with me, uh, John 10.10. 10. Hallelujah. John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Hallelujah. We know the purpose. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But there is a God. Hallelujah. He has come to give us abundant life. Hallelujah. Not just a regular life, but abundance life. Hallelujah. How do we experience this abundance of life in us? Hallelujah. There is an abundance flowing Hallelujah. From the cross. Hallelujah. And we see, we sometimes look at some of those people and say, My God, how does that sister survive? How does that brother go through this and still not crushed? Many times you have pressure from all the side, all different side. And you look at some of the people and say, How does she handle it? There is still joy. Hallelujah. Because of the abundance life. God does not expect us just to survive, just a mediocre, just, oh yeah, everything is fine, I think it's okay. No, God said he will give you abundance of life. Abundance of life means it's not just, you know, there's joy, there's peace, even in the midst of trouble, even when we face uh, difficulties, <clears throat> that does not bother us, hallelujah, because we know there is a resource out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It flows into the heart and it overwhelms us. When you think about his love, the overflowing power. Hallelujah. The power that you and me, God has given that power that we sometimes we don't realize how much power we have. We don't realize, we don't exercise how much power God has given us. Hallelujah. Many times why we get discouraged why we get why we get worried you know the world you in, in america or anywhere in the world there are so many people with problems of anxiety worry hallelujah all kinds of issues so many and they're trying to find the answer to their problems they spend so much money on uh, people and counselors and doctors and all different kinds of things but there's still no remedy but a child of God, what a joy, what a peace that we have in Jesus. Hallelujah. We shall be, and in Jeremiah, there's a verse that says, Jeremiah chapter, chapter, I believe it's 18 verse, um, <coughs> Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 6. Chapter 17, verse 8. child of God compared to the people in the world. <laughs> it has no worries in the year of drought. So there will be drought. There will be time, difficult times. And, and, and never fails to bear fruit. Hallelujah. Why do, we, why do we as children of God, it says the, as children of God have to face so much trouble. Even when we are in the right path. Even when we are trying to do everything, 
Why do we as children of God go through so much troubles? And we have that question all the time. Jesus said, yes, the, the thief that comes to steal, they come to kill and destroy. <clears throat> now there's a difference between stealing and being a, rob a thief and a robber, right? A robber comes with a gun and takes your stuff and say, if you don't give it to me, I'll, you know, whatever, you're, you're done. That's a robber. A, a thief, he comes in sneaky. He, you don't even know. He comes in sneaky and he wants to get the possession. And he is coming because there's something value in you. There's something valuable. There is something uh, very strong, uh, valuable, or something very important. And the thief sees that and his eyes are upon those things. He does it in a very sneaky way. Sometimes you won't even know until it's all gone. Then you realize what did what happened? What in the world did happen? Sometimes that, that's what the thief does to, to steal your joy, your peace, your happiness. Hallelujah. Everything that God has given it to you. But he comes to steal. And then he comes to kill. To kill means to, to take away your dreams, your hopes, your relationship, your family. He comes to kill and then he comes to destroy. What does destroy mean? Destroy means make it useless. There's no, no use for it anymore. Like in my house, there's a sewing machine. It sits there. It has no use because it does not work. It, it's destroyed. It's dead. It, it's messed up. Yeah, there is a sewing machine there. But it's useless. That's what Satan does in our lives. Yes, there is family. There is a relation. There, there are people. There are kids. There are everything there. But he comes to destroy the peace. It is there. There is marriage. There is relation. But it's destroyed. It's useless. That's what the plan of the enemy is. But the word of God says, Hallelujah. Not only the thief. The thief may come from one side. But there is a God, hallelujah, Jesus came that you may have life, abundant life, hallelujah. Abundance of life, abundance of peace to experience a life of abundance, hallelujah. Why do, when you go to Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 5, there's sometimes that we get worried and we have that anxiety, hallelujah. We worry, Lord, many times we get discouraged. Jeremiah 12, verse 5. Prophet Jeremiah is telling to the people who are disheartened and discouraged. He is saying that if you race with men on foot and they have worn you out. Hallelujah. How can you compete with the horses? If you stumble in the safe country, how will you manage in the thickest by the Jordan? Hallelujah. You must, as a child of God, you must understand, the harder your trials are, the biggest the blessing is. Hallelujah. The harder your trial is, the bigger your blessing is. Stop complaining about the footmen in your life. The footmen are the people that walks on the, walks on the land and comes, you know, as the army. The foot soldiers. There are foot soldiers and there are horsemen. Hallelujah. Now many times we get discouraged with the footmen. The, the purpose, some, and, and, and it says here, how can you be so discouraged? You complain about the footmen in your life. But you must remember, God is going to give you power to contend with the horses. He's preparing you to contend with the horses. So when you have troubles, situations in your life, don't give up. Don't quit. Know that God, there is a greater blessing coming over you. Hallelujah. So don't get discouraged with the footmen in your life because God is preparing you to run with the horses. Now, not only a man or a woman cannot run with a horse. You cannot contend with a horse. But the Lord says, you don't deserve, but you can run with the horses. I'm giving you the power to run with the horses. Hallelujah. Not to be just, be a mediocre, regular life. 
Sometimes we face, why, why do we face? Because there's something that is greater God has put in your life. And instead of looking at those situations, if we can see what God's plan and purpose in our life, we will not be discouraged. Stop complaining with the footmen in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, we are not qualified to run with the horses, but God is giving you the power. Hallelujah. Don't wait when the Lord speaks to you. Hallelujah. Help us, let us be obedient. There are times every situation that God brings in your life is God is speaking. God is, God, nothing happens in your life without going through his hands or his desk. Must know, a child of, child of God must know that everything it happens in my life. God has a plan and a purpose. Hallelujah. He has a high calling upon our lives. Hallelujah. So whatever the situation may be, hallelujah, can we say, Lord, whatever it is, Lord, I'm willing, I'm not giving up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, there, there, God, has a per, God has a different calling in everyone's life. Everyone is called for a different purpose. But if we wait, and, and be complaining and, com and sitting there not doing what God has called us to do, then we are going to be the losers. Hallelujah. You don't wait till the Lord, you don't wait uh, for God to move. You got to take a step. Sometimes, uh, uh, let's go to um, Hebrews chapter 13, 13. Hebrews chapter 13, 13. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. Hallelujah. And it says before that, so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make people holy through his own blood. He shed his blood like the pastor was saying this morning, hallelujah. He has got, done everything for us. He has given his life. He's a great shepherd who has given his life for us. What are we doing in return? It says, don't wait. It says, let us go outside. Our, outside the camp, not just within our church, but let's go outside the camp. Every one of us have a calling. It, it's all different calling. But let, let, let's go outside the camp, bearing the disgrace. Hallelujah. How many of us are willing, even in my trouble, in, even in my difficult time, I don't wait till, Lord, you uh, help me with those situations. Every time we pray for, Lord, help me, Lord, deliver me, all that is good. But when you start moving, that's when God starts moving. But if you don't move, if you don't take a step, then God is not going to take a step. And I, that reminds me of the, of the instance that happened of a story that is said in 2 Kings chapter 7. It's a beautiful story where, you know, we hear two voices all the time in our life. There are two voices. One is the voice of a Satan or voice of devil. And then we have the voice of Jesus. In, in chapter 7 of 2 Kings, we know the Samaria, that's a, there's a great famine going on. In that time, but then the man of God, Elijah, comes and says that he's giving a promise here. That he says that tomorrow at this time, a sale of finest flour will be sold for a shekel. And two sale of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. It is totally an impossible situation where there is so much famine going on. But the man of God is giving a promise that... Tomorrow this time for a sale of flour will be sold for a shekel and two sale of barley will be sold for a shekel. But, but there are people, there's the, the guy who was at the gatekeeper, he said, how can this ever happen? That's the voice of the enemy. The, it says the Lord, even if the Lord opens the floodgates of heaven, how could this happen? So there's always two voices that we hear that we have to make a decision in our life. Do we listen to the voice of God, the promises of God, or do we listen to the voice of the enemy? Here it says that, and the man, but, but we can see there were four lepers. Four lepers, and they said, they had a question. Why stay here until we die? Why stay here until we die? 
Many of us, we live in a situation and we want to live in that situation of whatever the enemy has done. We say that, okay, this is my life. This is how it's going to be. No. How many of you are willing to rise up? There are times you've got to cry out and yes, God hears your cry. But there are times you've got to rise up and say that I'm going to take what it belongs to me. Hallelujah. These four lepers, they said a question. Why stay here until we die? If you stay there, yes, you can die. Or you can go to the enemy's camp and take what belongs to whatever belongs, whatever the blessings. So it is your and my opportunity that every time struggles, tribulations, problems comes in our life, we have to say, why in the world, why am I staying here until we die? Until everything is lost. As a child of God, it is time that we rise up and take what belongs to us. And we know because, but these four lepers, because they heard, they heard and, and they decided to take a step. They decided to move forward and go to the enemy's camp. And because he, they made a decision in their life to move, God moved for them. When we move, that's when God is that's when God is going to move for us. Hallelujah. If we make our choices and if we make our decisions, God will move for us. He is a great shepherd. He is the Lord and he's the king of kings. And he will make your enemies under your foot. Uh, he will make your enemies to be defeated because God has the power. And he gives you the strength to overcome every situation. Hallelujah. And like I said, there are so many situations that we know that are people that have gone and overcome even in their troubles, not to be uh, in their troubles and situations, but they were willing to rise up. Zig Ziglar, but I don't know how many of you have heard about him, but he wrote a book uh, said Over the Top. And if you get a book, or if you ever listen to his messages, and he's a motivational speaker. He talks about Charlie Whitmire. He goes to the, this guy goes to the campuses, prison, and he goes to churches, and he gives such great motivational messages. But one thing about this guy, when you think about Charles, Charlie Whitmire, he, the, the situation in him, if you look at him, it's remarkable. He can only move his lips and eyes. Those are the only two things, because he has a disease called um, low gerin, something like that. What, is that what Jeremy? I don't know. Okay. But there is one disease, um, low hearing or some, I don't remember, oh, but Lou what is it? Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig. Okay. Jeremy yes. <laughs> they can only move lips or the eyes. They can, the voice won't come out. But this guy, even in that situation, his remarkable attitude, he, he will move with his lips and he will tell and his wife will translate, his wife Lucy will translate for him. But he goes to all these places and courageous people speak to, you know, about faith, hope, and never to quit spirit. That's the spirit that, you know, God expects from each one of us as children of God. And, you know, even when there are tribulations in this world, but know that he has overcome and his blood, we can overcome too. Hallelujah. If we give ourselves under the shepherd, under the guidance of the Lord Jesus Christ, he is a great shepherd. Yes, you know, sheep are like little animals. You know, we are called the sheep, right? We're like the animals that, uh, that are meek and gentle and all that. But you know what? Sometimes these, uh, one of the qualities that I read about the sheep, they are stubborn too. If we are stubborn and we're not willing to be under the leadership of God and, and the master and the shepherd, then he cannot lead you. It is important that we give our lives that where God is our shepherd and he will lead you. As David sings in his psalm, he said, he said, God, you are my shepherd. I, will, I shall not want. Everything, he gives provision, protection, care. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, and I'm going to stop in a minute. Something that, um, the stubborn nature of our nature. When Danny was little, when all these, I remember James, Charles, Joel, um, Jeremy and Dan, we all took, our families took, on a Christmas time, we went to uh, Galeria for as uh, high skating. When we went to ice skating, we, uh, the children, and we told them, hey, you all need to follow us. 
you need to look at the parents and make sure you stay together and follow the parents. Like a little duckling, they would walk behind us. Well, there was one time, after we were walking, there was one time that there's one boy missing. Danny was missing from there. Everybody got nervous. But you know what Danny was doing was, he was a stubborn boy. What he did, because we told him, we, we went from church and he had his suit. So he did not want to wear his suit. So he said, I don't want to go. It's so hot, I don't want to go in this. But we just dragged him and said, we, this is the only time we all need to go. So he was so stubborn, he decided that as we were walking, he decided to just stay back. And we all are gone. We walked, what we walked. And he is not to be, we didn't know. So finally, we had to come. We said, oh, Danny is not here. And, and we were, you know how parents get worried when you're lost, your son is lost. We came all the way. We walked quite a distance farther down. And then Danny, you know, he's just standing there. He didn't care. He was just a stubborn boy. And, you know, sometimes that's how we are. We don't want the leadership. We don't want to be shepherd. We don't want to follow the shepherd sometimes. We follow. We have our own way. But when you, are, when you make that choice, you have no coverage. You, are, you have no protection. The enemy comes to steal and destroy. But if you give your life and say, the good shepherd, he will, he will lead you to the paths of right, righteousness. Hallelujah, for his name's sake, where there's protection, where there's provision. Hallelujah. Yes, we do have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Thank you.